Hello. So, um, yeah, I uh, thought I made a start at the video, I promised. Um, I don't have a pen. Not that I'm, I'm not gonna draw anything, so um, relax, don't worry. Uh, but I somehow have the feeling I need, maybe I need a pencil. Um, so, <laughs> kind of weird. Um, so, we're lo looking at um, an error here, by the way, but never mind. It's not the point. So this is gonna be the panel I talked about earlier, uh, the Bluetooth, the tiny Bluetooth. Well, tiny. It's not that tiny, to be honest. Uh, Bluetooth speaker. And first of all, I'll let you show what my ideas are and what we're gonna use as material. I uh, hope this works, and hope it does out of focus uh, for a change. So we're gonna use this um, Bluetooth. Class D amplifier. It's a really simple uh, thing. I think it, it's on AliExpress. It's like ten or twelve euros or something, and it's uh, two times thirty watts, I believe, in six ohms, four ohms, somewhere in that region. I don't think it is rated for four ohms, to be honest. But uh, well. We're, we are going to use it as a 4 ohm amplifier, or at least the speaker is going to be a 4 ohm. So I tested it and it, it works perfectly fine, it doesn't get hot or anything. It's not so, it's perfectly capable of doing so. And this is a stereo uh, amplifier, but I wanted to make my uh, Bluetooth uh, thing a little bit small. So the, I had two options I used two separate speakers, left and right, or I have to make a sort of mono signal which is hard because normally you do this at line level uh, and definitely not at the outputs of an amplifier just put them together and then you will get fireworks so that was not an option and um, I thought what 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 am I gonna do use one channel and then output mono from the phone but that's a waste of one channel so I thought of uh, something different, but I'll explain later. I'll, I'll first get to the materials. So this uh, little tiny thing we're going to use, it's really nice. It sounded quite decent actually, and uh, there are buttons here for a next track and volume and such, but we're not going to use it. Because I just want to have it plug and play, you connect with it and it plays music. And uh, thank god you can play music at a decent level without using these knobs. Uh, one thing here, not sure if it is able to focus, probably not. There you can see it if my hand is on the way. There's a dip switch and um, you can uh, set the gain. So that's really nice, so you can set the gain it starts up in. And uh, I think I did not even use the loudest setting because it's way too loud. Uh, and it overdrives probably so but that's a nice feature if you're looking for such kind of um, amplifier to you to build the same sort of project uh, look if there is a gain setting in dip switches because otherwise you get you power up the thing you connect and then you have to manually up the volume which is quite annoying because I am not going to use any buttons it's going to be a closed case which brings me to the case so nice thing, cheap as well, very cool. I'm not sure if it's cool, but I like it. <clears throat> then, uh, as a casing, I thought of something like uh, this. I know it's black, it's black and there isn't much light, but it's, uh, it has this uh, style uh, slot you see very often in the laser cut parts, but you can do it with a mill as well, as you can see. But you see there in the corners there is this round thingy. It's because the mill is overcutting to make space for uh, this square to be able to fit in all the way. But it's actually not. Uh, I think it's quite neat. It's not bothering me at all. Um, this is for another project, by the way. But I'm gonna use the same method. Uh, I like the cooling uh, vents in a hexagon shape can be a little bit smaller especially for this amplifier it doesn't have to uh, 
get uh, rid of so much heat, so it won't be a problem. Probably gonna be smaller as well. Uh, in this case, there is a Euro connector here. We're not gonna use it. I'm gonna pop a hole right for this uh, thing because I want the power supply and main voltage uh, all in the brick. So uh, it's no uh, tricky business. Yeah, the brick the brick can explode or um, burn or burn down. I don't know, but. Uh, at least uh, I bought the brick and it should work, you know, so I'm not um, responsible or at least I never had one fail. Yeah, it stopped working, but it's not like it's going completely mental. Also, you um, If you drop something in this holes, then it's not a big big deal because there's just this amplifier and if something shorts the power brick will stop working or or stop work, working forever, but at least there's no main voltage because I'm gonna give this present to a child, so you never know what they do with it. So I want to keep it safe. No main voltage, anything, just DC voltages of maximum of 24 volts or something. Uh, if you put it on your tongue, it's still gonna hurt <laughs> pretty bad. You might even die, but <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I like this kind of casings at least and I like the fact you assemble them with two long screws and uh, This is gonna be the side where the panel will be and it will uh, Sit a bit on an angle So probably gonna do some rubber feet under underneath and then uh, the front feet will be slightly uh, higher than the back feet so the panel um, points a little bit upwards bought this uh, HPL um, a week ago it's pretty expensive to buy it new I never buy HPL new but it has uh, <coughs> this brand of HPL has this foil as you can see I, I left it on the bottom side but it's such a pleasure to get your nails in there and just you know and it's all pristine and nice and clean and Cool. So that's a that's a fun part of the of the project, at least for me. Okay, back to the panel. The problem with um, having um, a stereo amplifier, but only actually only one panel is gonna emit the the music. Um, so first of all, I thought about mono, but that's quite annoying because then I would lose one channel so I waste a lot of potential power and where we need power the most is in the low end so what I thought of was uh, actually uh, what they use in some sort of some some subwoofers I think usually in cars it's like a dual voice coil and it's a really cheap way of making a 2.1 setup actually so um, well, at least you don't have to combine the signals and such because it's driven by two separate amplifiers. So what I did, uh, the green lines is where the tweeter wires is gonna be of the left channel and then the yellow is gonna be thicker base wires but in this case I'm gonna lay a coil like this and I'm gonna make it maybe double, so twice and then I'm gonna redo the same thing over again with a separate wire uh, to make this double voice coil thing. So one of the coil in the middle is gonna belong to the left side and one of the coil is gonna belong to the right side channel. Um, and since most stereo um, effects, sort of, um, well, you, it's usually in the mid range up to high range that really does this effect. The lower you go, the more mono it gets. Also, if you get even lower, uh, a, a, a human cannot uh, cannot locate the sound. So if there's a low hum, for instance, a 50 hertz hum, you can just walk around your room and at some places it's louder and it's all because of the room interacts with it but you have really no clue where it's coming from so that's uh, funny and also annoying I had 
I had something like this. I just had to go around with a meter and then still it's hard to find. But with your ears alone it's not gonna work. It's just somewhere but you're, you don't know exactly where. So lo locating sound is more of a mid-range and a high frequency thing. Well usually uh, the frequency where we are most um, I think humans are most prone to the 2K I think, believe, somewhere. In this region, it's we well it's, it sounds the loudest to us. And low end we're pretty bad at as well as high end, but okay, so this is the setup sort of. Um the tweeter wires is go gonna be an even thinner wire than I used in the big panels because I have to reach the four ohm. Or at least close to it. I think I reached three ohm or something. Maybe I have um I bet I have uh, something written down. Uh, let me see. It's a present. Kado uh, huh? wires. Yeah. So the tweeter wires is gonna be a double row as well, but it's really thin wire. And even after two turns, so two two times this uh, this green stuff. And it goes back and does another turn. It's still only 2.6 ohm. But usually the tweeter is a bit louder than the low end because the low end is going to be filtered to get uh, a little bit lower uh, at the cost of efficiency. So the tweeter will end up usually a little bit too efficient. So we're just going to add a resistor of 1 or 2 ohm, just what sounds best. And then we will reach the 4 ohm slash four and a half ohm the amplifier likes so that's gonna be okay uh, the base wires is gonna be a double coil as well so 16 turns and then it goes back and it does another 16 turns and then you'll have one channel and it will be 6.2 ohms so slightly higher it's more in the region the amplifier likes and that's good because this is also the base panel is the region where the most of the power will go to, so the amplifier will be uh, in a in a nice uh, his comfort zone, sort of speak. Um, yeah, so that's the setup. It's gonna be a 2.1 sort of thingy. I think it's rather neat because uh, the low end is the hardest and needs the most power, and this is a good way to give him a twice as much power as as normal. Only bad downside is I have to filter it twice. For each channel I have to filter it. But there comes the, this box in handy. Because such a uh, box is uh, room enough for uh, some coils and stuff. I might make it a little bit smaller than this one by the way. But I have to see what kind of uh, values I need and how big these coils are. Uh, then I made... Um, let me see, I'll save this as well. Uh, yeah, so this is the layout for just the panel. And um, I made a kind of weird layout this time. And the reason is I'm gonna save on some uh, HPL. Because the nicest way was just uh, CNC or cutting this middle part away and then you got a nice frame. That's really nice and sturdy and it's it's definitely the best way to go but I think it's rather wasteful to throw this away and I know how it goes you do this probably two times and uh, then I'll have these tiny bits left laying around thinking I can use them someday or so which I probably don't so I make this uh, sort of a puzzle if you look at the Kanban I disassemble these parts and then it looks like this it's uh, well it's actually this but only the stuff I really need and now it's it's like it's less than half of the amount of material or I uh, I use if I made it out of one piece so uh, did not try this so it might not work at all but I think it will since what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna glue it to the metal, to these pieces of metal. 
So this is going to be a panel, the size the panel will be. I'm going to glue it to it with some epoxy. So this doesn't have to be, it's not holding anything, this construction. These tabs and puzzle kind of features are just to put it together and then I can lay it down on the metal and glue it without stuff uh, going everywhere, you know. And you want to glue something and then you pro yeah, you touch something else and then that one moves and so this is gonna be uh, that I'm probably even, I'll do it right now gonna leave a little bit of extra space so it will be a tight fit so it doesn't fall apart when I try to glue it so I'm gonna a roughing clearance, I'll leave some what shall I do? 0. 0 0.05 millimeter extra so it's gonna be that amount bigger than an I draw it or drew it, it at first time but this will ensure this uh, these points here that lock in uh, one another will be uh, slightly bigger and it will fit hopefully um, yeah, further I use, I'm gonna use some mylar of course, some uh, wires as uh, shown. I'm gonna use the 0.172 millimeter wires, that's the wire I used as tweeter in the big panels and it's gonna be doing base duty in this tiny panel. Uh, it will warm up a little bit at high volume but it's not, it's not dramatically bad or something. It's not gonna melt in mylar or anything. And the tweeter wire is gonna be 0 0.132 millimeter in diameter. So really, 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 really thin. This is gonna be quite a lot of work to put it on the foil. This time I'm not gonna use a jig to align the magnets because I'm just making this for, uh, for someone else and I make maybe two of them and that's it. I'm not gonna make a tool for it. I'm just gonna do it by hand the wires as well as the magnets. That's the reason why I left a little bit of extra spacing in the design. You cannot see it right here but the magnets stop here somewhere and then there's still a little bit of room left just to be sure because I'm gonna do it by hand I might as well take a little bit more, uh, more spacing in between the magnets than uh, planned and then I could end up uh, not being able to fit all the magnets inside and that would be rather annoying because then the whole setup fails so um, yeah that's the reason um, anything else? no, I think I'm uh, gonna cut these, um, these pieces and uh, look how they are and glue them up <laughs> 